Saturday Human Colony Hukalo Saturday webinar. Today, our very special guest is uh, Scott Grant. He is from uh, Glastonbury in the UK. He is a sound healer, a Reiki master, a metaphysical practitioner, an intuitive um, everything. <laughs> He's an intuitive, he gives intuitive guidance, guidance and healing, and we'll be introducing him in just a moment. But just to tell you, in the room today, we have let me get to everyone. We have Christine, we have Dawn, we have Ian, we have Jay, we have Paola, Scott, of course, uh, Steve, Temple, and myself. And once again, this is Human Colony. You can find out all that you want about Human Colony on Hucolo, which is H-U-C-O-L-O dot -O org. Uh, you have a list of all of our events, all of our Saturday webinar guests, and all of our classes and trainings that we have that are available. So please visit us if you'd like to be a member for $10 a month. You're guaranteed a place in the Hangouts, especially when Jim Charles is channeling, which is twice a month. And you can find the schedule there at hucolo.org. And just the last thing is uh, on the 16th through the 21st of August, we have the third Hucolo workshop in New York, and it's $400 for five days of channeling classes, galactic Reiki, and fellowship with all your fellow human colony members. So check it out, hucolo.org. Okay, Scott, welcome. Hello. Hello, hello to Glastonbury. So. Why don't you, uh, I've, I've talked to you before and I've known you a couple of years now, I guess. How many, about three or four years? Yeah, yeah it's been a while. Yeah, you've been, you were on my radio show before and um, a couple of times, I think. And uh, so why don't you, for the people who are listening, just introduce yourself, talk about, you know, your sort of your spiritual journey and, and what it is that you do. Okay. So obviously I'm Scott Grant. So hello to everybody and thank you for coming. So basically... My spiritual journey started about 17, 18 years ago, working um, with Reiki, Yusui Reiki. That, that's how I started. Um, and then from there, it's really gone to, you know, go to psychic circles, mediumship circles. And then I came across sound healing, which I do a lot now, which is incredible. And I'm going to, I've got some bowls ready for later for a little bit of a sound journey. So that'd be nice. Um, and so it sort of um, it went from working with, beings that were just, um, not just, but guides in the, the fifth dimension, then, it's, then it evolved to working with beings from the Pleiades, Neptune, Orion, Sirius, you know, angelic beings. And so it's been an amazing journey. Tricky and challenging, but amazing, you know. So it's gone from a person that didn't really sort of um, know much about any of the spiritual stuff to a time now where... I've just gone through so many initiations, so many awakenings, so many sort of aha moments and experiences with these beautiful beings, you know. And you know yourself, Karen, and the people on here, the more you work with these beautiful, angelic and, you know, beings from Arcturus and that sort of stuff, the more you sort of um, you open your heart and the more you grow to love these beings because they're just incredible. You know, look, your, your higher self, you must have such a profound bond with your higher self with all the work you do. Right. Thank you. Do you, do you, so everybody is so funny because a lot of people start with Reiki. That seems to be, we all thought Reiki, I've have a different idea about Reiki now because so many people opened up because of Reiki, you know, their initiation into Reiki, oh, becoming sure. a Reiki master. And then all of a sudden, all these other things start sort of piling on. And I think a lot of people said, oh, I want to become a Reiki healer, but they didn't really realize that opening up that rate, that the Reiki itself was such an opening for them. So were you attracted to Reiki? What made you first want to get involved with that? And did that start early or later in life? How did that work for you? Well, basically, I, at the time, I was doing a lot of sports. You mm -hmm. know, I was doing running, boxing, loads of different things on different days. And I started to really hurt my joints. And so I went along to see a, uh, a lovely Chinese, chiro not chiropractor, um, acupuncturist. Mm -hmm. And we got talking about, you know, what could I do for myself outside of the session? Right. And he mentioned about Reiki. Now, the funny thing is, when he first mentioned it, he told me that it was amazing and it made your hands warm. Now, the only bit I heard was it made your hands warm. And I thought, that sounds like a cool party trick. 
that's where I was in myself at the time. Yeah. And, you know, and so then I enrolled onto, uh, I think it was a 12 week long course, which was, um, you know, every, every week um, for a few hours a night with a lovely lady called Anita Smith. And then, yeah, it sort of grew from there. And so I went through all these shifts, you know, and Re Reiki is so accessible because a lot of what I teach now, what I do now, you know, it's got, you know, it's got the terms angelic, it's got the terms maybe Arcturian, Pleiadian. And if you're new, okay, Reiki is, is a very good sort of um, starting point. And for some people, they'll stay there for many. I was there for a long time with Reiki. It was only when I had a, a certain shift in myself, I moved onto something else because I felt guided to. Mm -hmm. And because they just use univer universal light, you know, Reiki, so universal chi, um, then it's it's easier for the, you know, what might be a, a scientific or a, at that particular point, a certain mindset that will allow you to, you know, say, okay, you know, it doesn't sound too woolly, doesn't sound too out there. And and I and I, I, I can open up to this without having to take on too many of, um, a lot of ideas, you right. know, um, that might be a bit too out there for me. So Reiki is a, a great- It's, it's a nice entry way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just I, I'm just noticing that when I when you talk to people and we've been talking to people now for a long time and and almost all of them say, well, first I came into Reiki and then so I, I think that the Reiki gods had had a, you know, a double agenda. Yes, let's give them a tool to heal, but let's let it really work on the on the practitioner themselves, you know, in order to open them up. I think that's that's the sort of, you know we didn't know that that's what really was going to happen. But now as you see more and more and more people uh, doing Reiki, then what also happens is they start opening up. So, but you, you see, you were talking about different beings. Do you deal with a specific group of beings or do you work with all different ones? And, and how does that work for you? Um, at the moment, I've started to work with more, um, more beings. Uh, originally, like I was working with, um, it was a work with originally i was working with a famous um little big horn no what's he called again sitting bull, you know, sitting bull. bull. yeah yeah okay. that was one of my original guides so and it's shamanic. it was it was shamanic to, to a degree but it was just i used to be in a, in, in a very very amazing little psychic circle and we used to have these beings come in and work with us and we learned about you know, and this was this was at a time when most mediumship circles were very much psychometry, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. all the basic stuff. Not sure. basic. That's not sure. true. It was still more 3D stuff. Yes, and it, it was, was yeah. yeah, it was more like future telling, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we we, we started at that point. Um, and this was this was pre-2012. We started we're, we're talking about chakras. <clears throat> then 2012, we then talked about. So we were talking about the causal chakra, the soul star chakra. And this was, you know, could have been 2011, could have been, yeah, could have been a little bit earlier. And so even these chakras then were coming in maybe a little bit earlier than what we thought that, you know, the 12 strands of DNA that came in, or well, the five extra ones that allowed for the next level of ascension. When I was doing my, my circles with these people, we were talking about some of this stuff a little bit before it was being talked about. So it was fascinating when it all came in and a lot of the stuff we were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so back then I was working with more of what I call guides that would probably be in the fourth or fifth dimension. And they might argue that, that they're not, <laughs> but that's where I was connecting with them. Um, right. And then from there, I started working with, you know, being introduced to Pleiadians, right. to Neptune, um, Orion and Around about 2012, I started to work very closely with angels. Oh, nice. So I started working with a, a famous author. Um, and that really sort of, um, it changed my life, to be honest, because before that point, I was very much with working with some ascending masters as well, you know, um, Quan Yin, Lord Rakotsky. But then I started working with angels. And mm -hmm. I must admit, I'm hooked. <laughs> so 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 now primarily you deal with angels are there any specific ones that you that you pr primarily communicate with or i work a lot at the moment with um archangel gabriel okay um i also work with arcturians which is 
an interesting subject on its own, which I'll come back to. Um, Gabriel at the moment, Mother Mary, um, Raphael, Zadkiel, and Archangel Michael. I work with those quite a lot because I work with them a lot in healing as well. So right. when I'm doing healing sessions, they will come forward. But to be honest, it you know it depends at the moment because I'm working with beings from Atlantis, from Lemuria, and more of what you call the 12 counts of light, which you've heard of yourself, which mm -hmm. consists of, um, you know, the ancient um, the ancient light of Mu, Lemuria, Atlantis, Neptune, Andromeda, Andromeda's not actually in there, um, Neptune, Orion, Sirius, the Pleiades, and a few of the different ones, and so basically it can interchange at any time. So I'll be like today, I was doing a healing today and I took the woman on a journey into um, the crystal of divine, the, the crystal temple of divine light in Lemuria and Atlantis, sorry, Atlantis. And she was working with Thoth. So, you know, it, it really depends at the moment on getting so many beings coming to me. because I've I'm supposed to be doing a few different things, which, I'll be honest with you, I've been dragging my feet a bit, you know, so I've not been doing, keeping up with what I'm supposed to do. So they're coming in now going, come on, it's time now, come on. And so, and so yeah, it's um, it's exciting, but it's also as well, it can be a bit overwhelming working with so many different energies at times. I can just, imagine, I don't know a lot about the beings from Neptune. I don't know really anybody, I, I don't think, maybe Don or Christine, you can chime in, but do we really talk about Neptune that much, do we? We don't. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you can maybe for our for our because we we talk about Arcturians all the time. We talk a, a lot about Orion, Syrians, and things like. But we really don't talk about Neptune, Neptunian beings. Maybe you can elaborate on who they are and and what they're, what they're what they're about. Really, of course. Yeah. Well, as far as I understand, and there's going to be obviously more people that might in, you know experience them a different way. What the Neptunians, as far as I, as far as I've worked with so far, what they do is, obviously Neptune's associated with very high psychic abilities. The energy is very very psychic, um, lucid dreaming, and all that kind of stuff. Now, at the at the moment um, with Neptune, and this isn't my information. This is someone else. It's my friends because I've worked with them with connecting with my past lives. It's very good if you're looking to connect with your past lives. It's really, really um, a really nice energy to connect to is the Neptunians because their energy is, is very strong, very powerful. for taking you on journeys to connect with your past lives in Atlantis, Lemuria, right. not even Atlantis and Lemuria, but generally your past lives. And so the energy with Lemurians is also amazing for developing your psychic gifts and going on some very deep, profound journeys to, to understand who you are based on your past lives. Now, right. There's been a very interesting development recently. There's been um, a new portal or, or um, a gateway open from Neptune that's coming down to the planet, which is very much helping with the ascension. Um, okay. And also, the, if I remember rightly, um, working with the Iron Presence. I must admit, they're the ones I work with the least, mm -hmm. if I'm honest. Um, uh, and I, we don't hear much about them. Oh, I'm getting feedback now. Let me see, is anyone else muted? Um, yeah, we don't hear about them that much, so it's quite interesting. But yeah, please tell us about the portal. Maybe when we do our journey, when we do it, we can specifically work with it. I know a lot of people have questions about their sort of past life, previous lives, parallel lives, or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. So, but please continue. Yeah. So basically, I could, if you like, I could try and channel some information, see if they'll come through. Yes, we'd love it. Yeah. 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 Well, let me see if that, uh, that there's loads around me at the moment i can feel them and i can see see you know what's interesting that's why i don't you know things pop out at you when you're having that's why i like to have conversations like this because whatever's in the moment and then the things pop out at it i really don't know much about it but i do know that there's a lot of people trying to access uh, in our group a lot of people trying to access p past life previous lives to you know because people are really looking at trying to clean up a lot of stuff and if, if, if you've got traumas or whatever going on from there or information that needs to come through then uh yeah so perfect so we're we're interested to hear okay. about neptune <laughs> okay. the first thing they're saying to me is 
Mm -hmm. Basically, that they're they're also masters at working with um, working with the, the unconscious and the subconscious. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're looking, and I didn't even know this. This is news to me. See, hey. um, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> so, it, welcome, Neptunian beings. Yeah. And if maybe if there's a group that they're speaking to specifically, you can ask them. Then we we know who we're speaking to. But if you just want to, if they just want to be the Neptunian energy as well, it's fine. If they have a name, or we're also interested to know that. Okay, names are sometimes tricky for me to get. Sure, get, no problem. Let's see if we can get them. Um, so basically, what what they're saying is they are they're going to talk about what they do first, and then they'll come back to who they are because. I've, what I've found with a lot of these beings, they don't necessarily want to give that. They're not. We like to give names because of who we are. We do, we just do. Oh, I've lost you. Sorry, that's a very human convention. Yes, it is. Yeah, I yeah. do it. You know, I'm like, what's your name? Where are you from? Yeah, you know, straight away because I like to know these things because it's the yeah. I, I love that. It helps us <laughs> pin them down, identify them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so basically, what they're saying is, they're basically. They are here at the moment, which is very interesting, working with humanity, with healing the, the unconscious and the, con and, the, and the subconscious patterns. And also, as well as saying, they're working with, working with the, we have, obviously, you know about the ego, you know, and there's an inner ego and there's an outer ego. And they're saying they're very much working with, you know, some other beings to start to, work to break down the outer ego so that the energy that's coming in from their planet is as far as i understand it is working to illuminate on the planet what needs to be let go of which is an old deep um psychological scarring from you know uh your you and my an ancestral and everybody on here their ancestral lineage you know, so they're working very much with that. And it does make sense. <clears throat> I know that there's a there's a thing that they say in Hinduism that when a person becomes enlightened, that their um, ancestors rejoice because then the healing is not only happening for the person, but it happens through the entire ancestral line that goes on. Of course. Yeah, yeah. That, that's why um, I find at the moment and this going off piece a bit, but I'll come back. That the genetic lineage thing, the ancestral thing, what a lot of people don't realize, obviously, you know this as well. We're not just healing ourselves when we're here, we're healing the past and ancestral issues, the past ancestral patterns. But for each person on here, and for each person on here, um, it's basically every one of us that is going to ascend. Or going to reach that high level, we we will not ascend fully until our the hundred forty no the the hundred and forty four in our soul group ascends as well. Mm -hmm. So for every person here, a little tip for if say say Jay or Ian or or Don was doing a healing on themselves, I would always end the healing with, if this is for the highest good, please do this for all those in my hundred and forty four soul group. And it's just the most beautiful thing because you know. When you've got your soul group and they might be going through a hard time you know yourself that there's a lot of mirroring going on the planet you know there's projection there's mirroring all that kind of stuff but there's a lot of mirroring going on amongst not only people that are in separate soul groups but people that are in the same soul groups and so when you're going through your stuff and you're going through that that big change all the time now when i'm doing a meditation the one thing i do do is at the end of it always ask for the healing for my 144 soul group and I'll tell you a wonderful thing to do for the people that are here now or they're going to watch this later. Try doing a soul group love meditation with calling in your 144 soul group to connect with you through the heart, the higher aspects, not the not the ones that may be the physical. And that's very special. You feel this overwhelm of being back in your um, in the heart of your your soul tribe. And it's it's you know what I forgot all about that. I used to do it for a long time, but it's very special. I would love we we should do that. That'd be lovely, wouldn't it? I think we should, do, we should do that in a high five. And we should but also can you explain because 
we you hear a lot about 144,000 blah 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 you're talking about 144 can you maybe give the 144 soul group definition so that's clear for everyone what that is and and how that works okay. and are these souls are they all incarnate here right now or are they throughout the universe is it in time past time future time how does that work so basically that's a big question <laughs> so i so asked the big question <laughs> no it's good it gives a lot, lot for me to talk about so basically okay now we hear the the the, the, the number 12 and and I'm, I'm sure people on here have seen 12 you know been repeated in sacred geometry um for instance if you look on the the metrons cube there are 13 circles now the 13th circle is very interesting because the 13th realm is is as far as i understand it is the is the central sun it's the realm of the divine source like god whatever you want to call it now each person on here okay your soul has 12 aspects okay how evolved you become okay determines on whether more of your soul will join with your physical aspect if you think of this the energy of one I'm going to sit up straight so i'm going to get serious <laughs> the and also as well as hunch so the energy wasn't flowing the energy of one of your aspects of your soul is quite high and to hold any more of that in the 3d would have been hard because of the energy itself it's quite gluey it's quite sticky it's not a flow energy at all we all know the third dimension we've all been there you know we still fall back there at times and so basically your soul group is 12 times 12 okay now 12 is, is a very divine a very sacred number okay there is some people that say 12 could be a limiting a limiting number and if you it depends on what way you come at it but 12 is sacred in the sense that it holds four like a, um a number of divine trinities four divine trinities okay now i haven't gone much further on with this but i'm going to channel the rest of this because i started on this earlier and i'll see why 12 was important because they started telling me show me the divine triangles and why it was important but i didn't finish it so let me just see why the 12 is important now Now, the first thing they say about 12 is this. The number 12 is, oh, hello, Suzanne. Um, the number 12 is significant because there are 12 dimensions, okay? And when we connect to the 12th dimension, we are connecting to the highest realm we can, okay? Um, as an evolved master with connecting with God, okay? And the various dimensions are like 12 steps back to um, that ultimate reconnection with the divine. And they say those who work and master these 12 dimensions, these 12 realities, come back to being the, the true divine essence, the true divine spark of all that is. And, and through that experience and through that development, you come to really know God in the most powerful and most profound way. And so on this planet at the moment, it's so interesting that we're going through this very powerful, very, very special shift. Yeah. Where for the first time in a very, very long time, we're talking about, it could be. Are you, are you OK? Could you hear me? I can hear you just fine. We can hear you just fine. I do want you to tilt your camera back down because we only have you sort of from here okay. up. You, you got a little bit, there you go. You got a little bit too low and where we, we can see you, I'm looking on the YouTube video and you, you're, you're, yeah, you'd sunk it down. <laughs> just well, my nose. Questions come to mind because I, I, the things that popped in my brain were, it's interesting that, that, so these 12, these 12 dimensional souls are the times 12 yeah. are our sort of whole soul group. 
And then you can imagine that everybody else is in their own sort of Merkaba of soul group 1212s. And that it, it just popped in my mind about soul retrieval, why that's so very important. That's such a focus of healers. They're always talking about the soul retrieval and 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 things like that. So I, I don't know if that stimulates anything for you, but that that's what's sort of coming into my into my mind as you're talking, that how we are we are the we are the caretakers not only of ourselves but also the full aspect of ourselves and when we talk about completely knowing ourselves it's really knowing our true divine nature and at some moment it will encompass the fullness of who we are you know we have some awareness sometimes some people do some people don't of other aspects of ourselves that are incarnate but we're not truly having because we have this sort of singular focus because we have to be able to focus on our own life um, sometimes we just get glimpses but i can imagine at one moment when we sort of are more multi-dimensional we are able to sort of have more of a more of an overview but in the meantime as a caretaker of our own soul we we do our best so that like you said this you know, let this be for the good of my complete self so that all of myself can be healed and all of myself. And and I have to imagine, and I know in my own experience that, you know, I'm experiencing something, but I know I have other soul parts of me that are much further along, you know, that have actually reached down through time to help me and take care of me and things like that. But yeah, so maybe if if that's along the lines of what you're talking about, I that'd be really interesting to me. Some of what you said there is exactly right. Some of what we, you know, soul retrieval is, is so, so, so important because, you know, we get fragmented through time, through trauma, through, you know, maybe being in a war, being tortured, different things. And parts of you get stuck, even being held back by, you know, some dark energies that have, you know, sort of had their sort of um, naughty way with you at the time. Now, basically, with regards to the soul and the 12 aspects, now you wouldn't generally as far as they're saying here you wouldn't generally take back a whole soul aspect um to bring back onto your body it would be more a splinters of a soul aspect mm -hmm. and basically in answer to your question with regards to um a some of them future past and above of course some of them some of them will be and this is the bit that might blow some people's minds some of them might be incarnated here as a physical body and there's your twin soul and so some of them you can't ever take back in as a physical being here because they already have a body so obviously they can't but if they're above you and you evolve enough then you can take back certain parts of your energy and it will join you again you know if you think of some of the real big masters you know lord jesus the buddha and all those types of um, people because they evolved themselves to such a high level they became um you know a temple of light and each person here you know, yourself karen ian don what's the lovely lady at the end called again i've got a name christine christine christine, christine suzanne anybody well basically all yeah all of you basically i lost was now <laughs> You're talking about the fact that like Jesus became a master yeah. of light and, and, and so Yeah, thank you. <laughs> tangent. Sometimes you might actually bring me back again when I go off tangent. And so each person on here, okay, your aim, okay, and your ultimate goal is to work on yourself to a point where your shackles are clear, okay, and so you become a clear vessel. When we become a clear vessel, we can then anchor our higher light. When we start to work to anchor a higher light and we work on our patterns, our reactions, that sort of stuff, because if we don't master our patterns and how we focus, what we think about, if you are able to access a higher energy, say this is the third, okay, you're able to transcend your, your ego and lift. If you are not doing the steps and mastering the fourth, which is self-love, then mastering the fifth, which is easier, obviously, because then it's not got the, the gritty of the, the, the third, which merges into the fourth. And you don't master self-love. And, and so a lot of people do this. They 
they go to high energy workshops and they get lifted into the fifth but there's no work in between okay and when we do this we come back down now why this is relevant with the soul is because each of you here okay if you do not master your ability to heal your inner child stuff now what a lot of people don't realize is your inner child is the gateway to your soul it's the true gateway mm -hmm. and your inner child is not a child it's a highly evolved being that is of the purest essence oh, who would nice. like it's nice isn't it who would like in this in this to connect with their soul energy as well so i can show you that later i can take you to connect your soul energy mm -hmm. and i'll show you why your soul can't come into any trauma because your soul is the softest most delicate energy you'll ever feel it's just it's amazing yeah and, and so later that'll be lovely i'll take yeah. your soul and i'll do a little bit of bowls and we'll send some connection to our 144 soul group how about that so oh, be that sounds awesome yeah that's i think christine had a visceral reaction like oh yeah it's a beautiful way to think about your inner child everyone thinks of their inner child just being the little person of them which is that's part of it but it's that what what happens is is in trauma you have this amazingly open wise being that comes into the world with their knowing of purity and it's only it, it's the interactions that that are had on the first instance that can either embrace that child or in some ways cause some trauma because of the purity of the child and that has to be healed what has to happen is that trauma needs to be taken off it's like a covering that comes over the knowing of your true divine nature so yeah but it was beautifully said like that steve has a question um if he can just uh steve if it's on topic please ask your question all right hello i scott so in reference to this 144 so each of us but here on this in this realm in this density has 144 soul counterparts that we have to assist to wake up is that is that am i understanding that correctly yeah <laughs> is that, I mean, it's been identified that part of my mission here from the pleiades is to wake up my soul family i've identified like a half dozen of them so far but there's like 130 some more i need to find remember they might not all be here okay so so don't think oh my god i i know it's hard enough for me never mind 144 not all of your soul group will be here right okay so don't don't think oh my goodness you know and remember as well you know a lot of your soul group will also be conscious like yourself steve working on their own stuff right themselves. and the ones that are conscious will also be sending energy back to you right and there's one that thinks i'm nuts so <laughs> <It happens. laughs> right Okay, I uh, thank you. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you, Steve. Uh -huh. That can be pretty daunting to think that you have to take care of your whole soul. No. Yeah. And, and, but I understand that. So yeah. 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 So we we have to remember that our soul group, some of them may not be incarnated now, some of them it's you're multidimensional, so you have all different aspects, but ultimately the the learning the experiencing that, that that you as a soul want to do you're looking you're doing it at any given time for lack of a better word in 144 different ways you're looking at it yeah um, yeah yeah so it's, it's, it's you can that's why they say you can only work on yourself and that's enough you know? oh, really? <laughs> yeah did anyone have any questions for Scott? Because maybe now's a good time. We will continue this conversation for a few more minutes. But did anyone else have any questions? Christine or Dawn or Ian or Jay or anyone? OK, well, let's. Oh, who's that? Christine. Christine. Go ahead. Um, you know, I was, <laughs> was going to say I do worry about others. And now that um, you're saying 144, <laughs> I won't feel so bad about uh, leaving all those others to worry about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll just send best wishes and because that is true. You were talking about dreams and so on and so forth. Well, I'm getting some really strange dreams that are um, that are annoying to me. 
because it feels like um, I'm going backwards instead of being helpful in my dreams. You know, I'm striking out. <laughs> so what are the so, dreams? What are the dreams? Um, it's um, lately it's been um, around a royal family. I mean, it's sort of like I'm obsessed with and I'm going, you know, with all the plots and all this and that. And I'm going, why on earth are you doing this? I mean, was it a previous life that I was caught up in this? I don't want to be in this. You know, I want to focus on something healing, you know, healing others. That's what I want to focus on. Instead, it's all this other, you know, stuff, worrying about um, people being hurt here and being, you know, in the royal family or something. Why the royal family? <laughs> you know, it's why am I caught up in that gossip? You know, so when you're saying dreams, I'm wondering, you know, and the 144, I'm wondering, so what is it that I need to um, focus on in order for me to really know what all these dreams are about? You know, instead of being camouflaged. Yeah, of course. Let me just tune in a second. It won't take long. Let's be, because honestly, if this is a deep healing that needs to occur for you, which is coming out of your dreams, or there's some connection back to a royal family thing. I feel straight away it's a, it's a past life, what you're, what you're feeling now. Okay. Straight away, I feel it's a past life. So, what I recommend you do, okay, is after you've done this session, sit down. Um, call forward your guides and your higher self and ask that if it's time now um, that what I'm going through can be healed, transmuted and released and all cords and attachments are cut, okay? Call Archangel Michael at the same time to place around you a, you know, a, a beautiful cloak of protection. I'd call in Gabriel to purify and cleanse all of your, your cells and Gabriel is remarkable. You know, what we know about angels is very limited to what they can do and the more i work with gabriel the more i see just how amazing energetically he is and who would be good for you as well okay i'm getting for you a good one for this for you will be archangel raphael what it is what's interesting is the past life is being triggered now by the royal family thing so that's come up and so your mind is making sense of the royal family through um your your mind is making sense of your past connections to the royal family through your um, your dreams, and it's so associating that with the royal family now. But it's only putting that the, the faces on those because it's it's more association in your dreams. Because sometimes when we we're not aware of what needs to be healed now, you will dream it because in your dreams it means you're in a free estate to see. Okay, I get the feeling that if you you acknowledge this you accept this and you choose to let it go christine it will just clear that's good because um one of my cats is um really feeling threatened and i think somebody told me it's because they're taking on uh part of my um my battle or whatever and uh i i really feel bad for the cat <laughs> You do this, Christine. Now, yes. cats and dogs, okay, they are protectors of humans. And what they do do is they transmute our energy. A lot of people don't realize this. And this is why dogs, and largely dogs, but cats do it too. But where a dog will all of a sudden get tumors, cancer, it's not their stuff. They, they transmute because they are protectors. They transmute the energy. But cats are the same. Cats love their owners and they'll take on the energy. If you put a little bubble of protection around your cat, ask Archangel Michael if you're going through a hard time, then your cat will not be um, affected. You can also, as well, ask for healing for your cat from uh, Raphael. And your cat will love that. <laughs> I Thank you very you much. On that. I agree with you on that. I know that I had a dog years ago and I was going through the most stressful time of my life and my dog developed a tumor and you know he was so healthy and then one moment he just all of i'm i don't want to take you know 
too much time about it, but I, I'm sure, I'm sure that that's what happened with him, that he took on all of that stress, you know, for me. We don't know though, do we? You know, well, I we don't, don't know, know. But, but I'm just saying, I think I really, that's what came to my mind. And so it feels true to me, you know? So he, I think that he did that for me because there was a moment where it was just, yeah, I think that that's what happened. No, so doesn't. yeah, I would have, I should have protected him more. But I, you know what I mean? Like you're in your stuff and you don't know, but, and I don't want to get into the blame or any of it, but yeah. I really felt that that's what had happened. It just seemed that, that that was the truth of it for me. So, yeah. but anyway, how does that help you, Christine? Good? <laughs> okay. No. So, so tell us about how you work then. What do you, what is it you actually do and, and how do you actually work then with like this upcoming meditation we're going to do? What is it that you do? Uh, this um, up and coming meditation, what we'll do is we are going to obviously take a few deep breaths and then I'm going to I'm going to take on a little guided meditation up to your soul star chakra. Now, your soul star chakra is 12 inches above your head. And that's the point at which your your soul energy enters in or, or comes in when it can. OK, now you can always connect with your soul love. And what we'll do as well is, as, as for, for an extra treat, we will connect with Archangel Zadkiel as well, whose energy is just, it can be very strong. And it, it works with past life. It works with helping us with Mario to um, integrate our, our I am presence, our higher self energy, um, but also to purify, cleanse, reconnect with the soul and heal any soul issues fragments and that kind of stuff and what they're telling me now is that archangel zadkiel also can help also helps when you get to a more of an evolved state for you to connect with more of your soul so that's pretty cool so i didn't know that either <laughs> and so it is it is amazing when you do these spontaneous talks because it does leave for so much more to come in rather than just is yeah. this what you thought we were going to be doing today or no <laughs> no a lot of it. it's more i thought i was going to come on with a list of talking about but this is better <laughs> well if there's any of that that you would like to uh to talk about if there's anything that's like burning within you why don't we pick it up after the meditation yeah of course yeah and then we can talk about it yeah so if we're if we're ready if, if there's no more questions in the chat is there any more questions i didn't see any come up at this moment Maybe there'll be some after the meditation, but why don't we go ahead and uh, why don't we go ahead and do okay. that? Okay. Can I, can I can I just test and see which what these bowls sound like? Make sure they sound sure. okay. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. I'll start. We'll start with the heart one. Thank you. And also, too, um, can you hear me from where you are? Can I? Yeah. I'm going to come over to the front of the. No, the as I'll I'll tell you when you come back. No problem. Okay, so here is the, the heart shackle. I thought we'd do the heart. Are you going to? Oh, oh, your camera just went off. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'll bring them over to here. This is very exciting. <laughs> oh, you love this. It's, I, Zadkill is one of my favorites. I can't say that because it's not really fair. But when I was going through a very hard time, Zadkill used to come around and he'd put this sort of, oh, back in a second, two seconds. Okay. Um, also, too, there was a request. There was a request from the group chat on the YouTube. If you can talk a little slower, for some people, you we I find your accent lovely, but so for some people, the Glastonbury accent is uh, is okay. Is, is, uh, okay, I'll, I'll try. So I'm sure when you do, you know, when you when you do your meditation, I'm sure you'll you'll slow it down. Okay. Um, but just maybe take a little. Okay, so take more deep breaths. <laughs> <laughs> I get yeah. excited when I'm on, on a show and it's raw. It's so, exciting. It's nice energy. We feed off of each other. So oh. this how does this transmute? Transmit, sorry. Can we can you turn your camera on or no? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. It'd be nicer if people could see it too. And maybe explain what the what what it is that you're using and, and what it is, what it's made of, what how you've gotten it, that kind of thing as well. Hmm. Did we lose you? Hello? Hello, hello. <laughs> well, 
<clears throat> While we're waiting <laughs> for Scott to come back, we might have lost him. Let's see. Scott, did we lose you? Hello, hello. Okay. I think we might have lost him. He totally froze. Let me let me send him a quick message to let him know that uh, he's dropped off. Because I'm sure he's still talking. <laughs> That'll be very uh, shocking for him. Oh, he did. He dropped. Okay. So hopefully he can just sign back in. Let me send him a message. <clears throat> this is the... Uh, this is live, uh, live stuff here, people. Christine, or anybody, does anyone work with singing bowls, or does anyone work with any kind of here? He is, he's back. I do. I work oh, with perfect. the. Heart. Oh, that's right. You have the heart one, don't you? Yeah. I'm it. Can we you lost you there for a sec. You did. Yeah. I'm, I'm turn on your, your camera back, then we can. I think that was the. You turn it. I don't know if it dropped off or, or you had turned it off, but. I think it's back on now. Uh, it looks like it's back on. Yeah. We've got the bowl here. Okay. Let me... So this is a heart crystal bowl. Mm. And this is made of 99.9% um, sort of um, silicon quartz crystal. So it's a, like a pure crystal. Oh, nice. So it's, yeah, it's very nice. Let's see what the uh, sound is like. Can you hear that? It, it cuts out for me after a second. Um, Let's try something a bit heavier. Right. I, I think it has to do with the, um, the, the, I'm just, I'm trying to make sure that I have the, one moment, I'm trying to get to the, does it cut out for everyone else or not? Can you hear it when he's doing it? Uh, no, for me, it doesn't cut up. Oh, you can still hear him? Yeah. Yes, I can hear him. Right now. You can hear You can hear the bowl. No, I can't hear it. Let me see if I can change the microphone. I think your microphone is voice activated, is it not? I think so, yeah. Yeah, turn it on so where it's not voice activated. And then it'll continue to hold the sound. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh yeah, it is voice activated. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, that sometimes when you, there's a continual sound, then the microphone the just, just cuts off. Good job, you know. <laughs> right. This is the bass. Yeah. Yeah. We're hearing yeah, we're it. We're hearing it now. So what I could do is I'm gonna I'm gonna take on a little journey up there first. Okay. Get you into the space. Then I'm gonna go do the bass, the heart, and the third eye. I do like about three minutes on each, so it takes you on a nice journey with the bowls. And what we'll do is for an extra treat, we will call forward the pure essence of your inner child. And so you, you can feel how your inner child feels beyond the trauma, the various issues and blockages that have been created through the interaction of the spirit, the spirit with the physical. Okay. Okay, so... Sorry, I Sorry, muted myself. myself. I'm going to stick to it so there's so no there's feedback because I can hear feedback, feedback now. now. Okay. Okay. So, okay, so, so when, when we finish, go back, go back to, to the talk. talk. <laughs> okay. Okay, but okay, I look forward, forward to it. it. I look forward, I look forward to it. I'm going to move you closer. Okay. So I can sit back. And I'm moving now. now. Okay. So, so. See you when we're done. See you soon. Okay, so if we can start by taking a few deep breaths in and out of our hearts. Setting our intention to let go of everything at the moment, 
currently limiting us or holding us back in all of our chakras, light bodies, cells and DNA and also in all lifetimes, universes, dimensions and planes of existence. I call around the angels to protect us at this time and to make this a wonderful, joyous and divine experience for each of us. Okay, so what I'd like us all to do now is to start to bring our focus. Most of us at this time will be around about either our heart centers because you're breathing there or your third eye. I would like for each of us now to start to bring our focus <clears throat> up through our bodies, out through our crown chakras and to go roughly about 12 inches above the head. As you start to go above the head, once you start to reach the soul star chakra, what you'll find is you'll start to feel a very soft energy. Now, originally in the old Indian texts, we were shown the chakras as being circles on the front, like round plates, you know, horizontal to the body. The truth is that chakras are actually the other way around. They're like plates that slot through the body. And so for anybody that's seen um, Avatar, where there's a plant that opens up and it opens up and it looks like lots of, looks like clay pots really on stalks. Boom, 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 going out um, horizontally, going across. That's how your chakras work. And if you think that really it makes more sense that your chakras are circular discs going through the body because it would make more sense that when we expand them they can open up with ease because they're already in the position to do so rather than it being a cone. Now what my guides are saying where the old idea of the circle comes from is that that may have been a vortex that was there. Okay a vortex of energy which interconnects with the chakra itself. Okay, so if anybody can't find this place or they, they have trouble going in, what the best thing to do is to ask Archangel Zadkiel and Mariel. These are the two angels who work with the Soul Star Chakra. Ask them to remove any blockage that may be there and to guide you in to this chakra. If I give you a, a minute or so to start to get yourselves into that place. As you connect with this chakra, you'll find that you'll start to feel a very soft, a very gentle, loving energy. It's beautiful. I ask now for a special treat for each person on this lovely session today. 
to bring forward the beautiful, pure light essence of the inner child. You may not see this as a physical being because at the higher level it is more a light rather than a form. I ask that this energy comes forward and envelops each of us in this beautiful light.
For those of you listening, you might want to turn up your sound because the bulls are very light.
Okay, so we're going to start now to bring our awareness back into our bodies and back into the room. Say thank you to your, your beautiful inner child, your divine essence, and to Zadkiel and Mario for the lovely energy they brought through. And thank, thank you for, you that. for that. Can I get Can you I get to switch your mic back, back, back to? to? Voice activated. Voice activated. Yeah. There we go. <clears throat> just to let you know, there was a moment in the uh, meditation just towards the end where the light in your room shifted from being just a clear light. So now you have a blue hue. Oh, um, nice. <laughs> and your shirt looks blue. So, oh, really? So, yeah. yeah. In your eyes, you can see that they're very blue in this uh, thing before. Yeah. If they are blue, well, they're not as blue as they were a moment ago. Your eyes were really, really blue. So I would encourage anybody in the playback to go back uh, somewhere around uh, one hour, uh, 15 minutes, and, and see where the light shifts. It's very noticeable shift. And, uh, your eyes at one moment were very, very blue. Uh, looking forward so that was quite interesting to see yeah and we should have said to people to wear headphones I have them on and, and I could hear the sort of binaural uh, both uh, both sides it was quite effective now see you now you're fading back to white again so it was definitely hey, an energy color. shift huh? <laughs> back to normal color yeah, I'm, I'd be interested to see exactly where that happened, but you definitely have to, uh, I, I saw it like it's it just, it, there was a shift in the light um, for, for a moment. So that's good. In the last couple webinars we've had, we've had some energy shifting things going on. So it's, it's nice to uh, witness that. So, yeah. Lovely. So maybe if anybody else wants to say if they had any experiences in the, uh, in the, meditation is there anything steve you wanted to share with what was happening with you oh no i just get um i get ear buzzing a lot that's my kind of my thing so i do definitely activated that and of course just all tingly up in the head so that was a yeah, that was a very nice experience thank you i'm gonna if i can hear it right now it's wondrous <laughs> yeah. i will i will say that in the beginning when it first started it felt like tinkering that's that the energy was sort of tinkering like you know like a mechanic would tinker with yeah screwing things and loosening and tightening things and then there was a very another moment when in the i think in the longest one that you were, i could hear like little voices um and i was really yeah, angels. Yeah, angels or different little beings coming in so yeah, yeah i could hear the little talking the little um, I call them breezes. And the reason I call them breezes is because they're like these little voices that you can't really make out, but they're kind of like they're whispering and they're talking like this. Uh -huh. And you, generally what I hear is, oh, they're so excited. They're, they're, they're always happy that the person is there and they're wanting to do it. But I call them breezes because it's like wind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was hearing those little, those little sounds. So if anyone can go back uh, and uh, listen, I would listen to the tones. The first bowl... For whatever reason, the pitch was sort of not hearable. But then when you went okay. to the second bowl, and that might have, has everything to do, I think, with the miking and the fact that we're on Google and this is not high, high tech or anything. Yeah, but cool. from the second bowl is really when I think the energy was, you know, picking up and you could really hear all the nice little things. So yes. Stargazer says he's at peace. <laughs> could you feel the... um? The softness of the soul star chakra? I could in the very beginning, yeah. Yeah, I did. Can any everyone else feel the connect with the soul star chakra, the lovely soft energy? Yes. Don said yes. Yeah, I, I felt a unique energy that I never felt before, but yeah, it was, I don't know if I'd describe it as like super soft, but we're all wired differently. So that's Ooh. definitely was the soul star. <laughs> <laughs> did you know the soul star was there uh steve did you have you ever 
because I, I can feel it. I don't know if some people can feel the energy above their head, but you can sometimes if you some people can actually I can actually feel it with my hand. I feel like a little a warmth, a kind of warmth. Yeah, I can as well. Yeah. I knew it was there. I never I never messed with it before. So I'm <laughs> just able to touch it or something. All yeah. right. <laughs> Okay, so 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 tell us what the energy was doing then. What does it do? The bowls or the soul star? All of it. Well, the, the 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 bowls. What is that? Because they really cut through a lot of the stuff and they really focus your your attention. But what are they doing? What is the vibration doing? Basically, what the bowls do. Okay, they are the most amazing bridge between the physical. And the spiritual and now the chatter you could hear what basically happens is that the bowls create a link to where the beings that we can't normally hear um get get sort of um it becomes amplified within ourselves and as this becomes amplified we then can hear their frequency because we're linked in with them. So it's amazing. Some people from other workshops and stuff, they've heard radio, you know, radio signals from 1950s because you, you've gone between the timelines or between a certain sort of dimensional experience where, you know, we may have been on um, an old house which had an echo of, you know, like a 1950s sort of, you know sort of old type radio and it's just it's incredible because it it does go across um dimensions and so when it goes across dimensions you know from my understanding what is happening now is happening at the same time as everything else because it's it's completely working not synonymously what's, what's the word so they say so simultaneously so Simultaneously, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> simultaneously. So basically, this is why you, me, the people on here, we can shift a timeline just by choice. It doesn't mean that you can shift from a timeline you're working on because that isn't how it works. But you can be work. You can be living on this timeline, and obviously, you can shift in the idea of a timeline that. If I'm being negative, I can then choose to go down a negative experience of a timeline. If I'm being positive, I go in a different direction. But as we ascend, okay, we master ourselves, we are working towards connecting with a higher pathway. Now, <clears throat> for some people, they have the belief that their higher pathway will come to them. And that isn't the truth because your higher pathway is already there. So you imagine you're here. And you're not you're not doing your your work and stuff okay your higher pathway is here if you do your work then you get your higher pathway you you link with what's already there and so in you know in in practice now you do you do this you can at any given one time connect with the already evolved and highly developed you and so you can get a feel for what that feels like you know so you can literally link through and some of the stuff I, I do teach now is very much how to work with these timelines. And, and I tell you, it's, it's, it's quite profound. When you connect with your future higher self, the energy, you know, is just because each person on here, you've got an aspect of you that's already evolved, you know, very, very evolved, right. Right. whether it's with you above you or whether it's in the future. And when you connect with it and I use it now for when I do my work especially when i'm doing my manifesting i link into my higher future self that's already doing this stuff so i can already have the energy with me so i'll just bring it down whoosh and it's um profound for a lot of people because then people are interested in manifestation and, and how that works maybe talk about how how because um I think maybe I'll take a flight up to one of your <laughs> workshops. I, I do want to check your schedule because I will be in the UK in the coming time and see if there's something okay. going on. But for the people who can't and they're going to go on to maybe do some work on themselves uh, using sound and what what is it? How are you using? You say you're you're connecting to your higher self. 
for your manifestation? How does, what are you connecting and what way are you doing and in what way would people be able to do that as well? I'll, I'll say this first. I do do online workshops doing this. Well, there so you go. It, it so, goes to America and different places. And your website, your website, just we'll say it at the end, <laughs> but what is that for people who are listening? It okay. is um, www.obviously <laughs> interdimensionalhealing.co.uk. Okay, I'll type that up for everyone. Okay, but please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. And so basically, we're now moving into a very interesting time. Okay. Now, some of us are ready for this, some of us are not. Okay. Now, the old way of manifesting was the secret. Now, we all know the secret wonderful wonderful little um little documentary which i found quite inspiring myself i liked it but the new way of manifesting the secret manifested from duality and now what's interesting about um the secret and the whole idea around that one of my old teachers and i, and I, I read later about this as well um one of my old teachers who taught me about duality and each person on here okay generally when we manifest we manifest from our head now your brain okay is the physical incarnation the physical form of the mind the mind goes to the fourth dimension but i would say this okay i've worked with the pure fourth dimension and when you work with the pure fourth dimension i'd love to do a talk on this and i'll, I'll show people how to get to these states when you work with it, it's very different to what you expect. Our understanding of these dimensions is based around um, sometimes a very li limited experience of it. And now I'm not saying this as a subjective thing. I'm saying this more as an objective thing because I, I, I teach this a lot and I've shown people how to access these really amazing states of being very simply. It's not complicated. Okay. It doesn't take years of meditation, which is still amazing. It's needed. But with regards to doing this stuff, with regards to connecting with the different dimensions, ego, that's what I was talking about. I? Yeah. <laughs> I've gone off to peace again. Right. Where was I, Karen? <laughs> I was. You were, um, well, you were starting to talk about the the way that the secret was in the dualistic the secret, manifestation yes. process, and now that it, thank you for bringing me back. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm, I'm, yep. I'm paying attention. You are, you are. And so, basically, with regards to the secret, you were taught to manifest from the mind. Now, I'm sure each of you have experienced this. When you manifest from the mind, what you do is generally, if I was manifesting a job I wanted. If I was manifesting from the mind, I would then manifest a job, which might be the job I want, but I'd, I'd get a boss that I that I didn't get on with. If I manifested a partner, I'd manifest a partner, okay, um, that in some ways was was amazing, but in other ways was was absolutely a nightmare. I would, I'd manifest for two months, an amazing amount of abundance. Two months later, I'd have nothing, and this is the way of the secret. Now. We are now working with the fifth dimension. The fourth dimension, okay, is now interweaving into the third. And so each person on here is connected with the fourth, but the fifth is interweaving into the fourth. And to truly manifest and manifest in a way that comes from oneness without any. Now, if I explain why we manifest from duality, the brain is opposites, okay? You've got the masculine and feminine side, you've got the logic. You've got the creativity. They're not the same. They're, they're, they're both separate parts. And so when you manifest from your head, you do indeed manifest and you get exactly what you focus on. Not every time, because sometimes you won't get it. But when you do manifest, you will always get the opposite because you're manifesting from du du duality. In the new way of man, sorry, go on. No, I, I think that's a very important point. I think say that again, because that, that's true. Everything we we manifest both things always. You, you do because yeah, there, there is no other way. If you manifest from your brain, you manifest through duality because your brain is, is dual. It is both the light, the dark. You know, the the man, the feet, the, the male, the female. Yeah. And now, I know the men are probably 
some of you might be thinking what masculine and feminine both men and women both have masculine and feminine energies yeah. you know you get the physical form of a woman or of a man simply for you to have the experience of being more of that particular energy but for each of you now we are very much on a journey to master both our masculine and feminine because to truly understand a woman being a man you have to be in touch with your feminine for a woman to truly understand being a man she has to be in touch with her masculine now i'm talking now what i'm talking about this is because it's relevant to manifesting um why it's important that a woman develops her masculine is because the masculine the feminine is the ideas okay it's the the creativity it's where the inspiration comes from the masculine takes it and makes it a reality now we're not talking masculine bravado control all the old stuff okay what i am talking about is divine masculine divine masculine is strong but loving strong but supportive strong but guiding it isn't anything that takes away from anybody else um, in any sort of way and now the new energy coming in or that's that has come in is basically all about manifesting through love okay and so there are a number of stages you have to master in order to master through love the first one is self-love because if you haven't mastered self-love you can't receive okay so important it's not no, no you can't avoid it in the old energy okay you could that's the truth okay you could you could avoid it because the old energy was very mind orientated it was very ego orientated very ego driven there are two types of power one is love okay and when we empower ourselves through love what we do is always about love and it's always about the higher the greater good and also about your family about you having you know having money to to get food and to live your life the second one is your relationship with the divine now for each of you you're going to have to face your relationship with god now whether you like the word god or not you know some people don't but did you know that the word god comes from the word gut anglo-saxon germanic sorry and it means it means um mother earth it means divine earth it's only since christianity that the word god became changed and even the word good in and a lot of people don't know this i didn't know it either to be honest the word good anglo-saxon word good means god in anglo-saxon which is you know and so i like i say these things here because don't lose the true meaning of the word god and you know put it with religion now there is some good you know there's good people in everything you know? yeah well it's interesting because we we do we tend to think that whatever we know now is the meaning of everything but really everything has and we can you can spend a lifetime delving into the meanings of stuff and, and maybe that's possibly a, a good god thing to do um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah thank you for sharing that because that's true what you're saying and when we think of things as being relevant in this moment but the the core of what it is and, and and the true meaning of it is also very very relevant and ready and it just broadens our understanding so thank you for sharing that you're welcome mm. and so anybody on here okay that's looking to master the fifth dimension now the fifth dimension is trickier and the reason why it's trickier tricky-ish okay is because i can fall into a pattern and i'm sure we all associate with this that i've got bills to pay i've got my car to get fixed i've got to get this and so my mind goes into how can i make money okay now there's nothing wrong with money but i would say this change your manifesting your terms to abundance because money does unfortunately go back to greed and everything else so the word is very much associated energetically and connected with the lower frequencies okay abundance is the way forward i get told off by my guides every time i use money they say abundance abundance so and so for anybody here who's looking to manifest and to master the fifth dimension master the love for yourself and humanity if you master that love now you're thinking my goodness that sounds like a lot of work 
it is it is and it isn't you will never truly be happy okay until you truly love and accept yourself and truly love and accept the life that you have the experiences that come to you life is a gift and i know i know at times we look at life and we think oh my god what is going on and and you know why is this pay so no hard? to the chat <laughs> What's that? pay no attention to the chat That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um and so basically if we truly start to and i must admit okay i am mastering this myself you know every day working on sending love to the planet sending love to myself at the same time and the more we do it the more we start to bring ourselves to work from a place of love right. and once you truly do okay there's 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 two ways of manifesting okay one is where we have a singular focus and we become very very focused and very intense now we like that because we feel in control okay and that's a hard one for us we love control human beings yeah. we, included, we love control because it makes us feel in control it makes us feel like we are in charge now if you can get to understand that being in control control and focusing too much creates a narrow mind mm -hmm. okay now we're moving into a new time okay and i'm, I'm looking on getting there's some extra course and stuff and a book on this actually because it is where we're going now it's going to be it's going to need to be known a lot of the old teachings okay they're very much focusing with the mind they're very much about working to promote the development of your positive ego now your positive ego is anything created okay through your focus which is the to try and counteract any of your old negative patterns i was not good at manifesting not saying me i'm just saying sometimes <laughs> you know this is a prime example you know i have issues with manifesting so then i become a warrior of focusing on manifesting and then i promote my 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 positive ego because the positive ego is then the opposite to the negative ego and now ultimately what each person here and on the planet is looking to do with moving forward with your your development is to start to master yourself where you become what is called the infinite expanded consciousness when you become the infinite expanded consciousness universe opens up things just come out of nowhere boom 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 now you can produce miracles still doing the the very mind orientated focus and what i'm talking about here is is, is quite advanced but it's where we're going it truly right. is where we're going okay it is where we're going because in the fifth dimension first there's no time um you know so things manifest quite quickly or they take the amount of time that they take but there's no there's no controlling of it and and just it has to you you have to tr it's the trust thing that comes up um but if i think as you were talking i was thinking about all the books you know that that were written around this sort of you know sheer will hard work focus focus folks fo you know i think there's one called there's a mind called mind power I think, I, there, yeah. I think there's a book called that mind power you know steel will i mean just focus 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 and just and it's also the control thing of very specifically aiming your life in this very pointed pointed direction with you know no allowance of deviation and and there's a lot of things that come up when people ultimately are not able to say maintain the the velocity of that kind of endeavor it's exhausting to do that and then there's also the things of the failure and then there's the search around why did i fail why you know <laughs> why was i not you know why was i not able to even within law of attraction i think you know if you if you talk to people about it they'll say well you're not thinking positive enough you're not just it's exhausting you know as opposed to being it opening is. to flow and trusting in your well-being trusting in the abundance itself only without having it to manifest as a car manifest as a you know windfall of money it doesn't generally work that way i mean that could happen but 
the true abundance, and I think that's what you're speaking about, is that soulful abundance of connecting to your true divine nature, connecting to your unconditional love. And, and within that, when you really do connect to it, your total goal outlook really does change also. Of course. You know? So, yeah, I'm disagreeing with you. But Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's where, yeah, no, exactly right. It's where you shift from, you know, the material. Now, yeah. don't get me wrong. One of the, the worries that people have, okay, <clears throat> Is that when I shift to being spiritual, I'm going to be poor. But if you shift to being spiritual and you've got the mindset, you are going to be poor. That's the truth. You are going to be limited. So whatever you believe is the truth will change. Now, the new way of being is to do as you, as you said, where you start to work from your soul. And you're also working to allow for all of the mind constructs. And I tell you, it's very free. It doesn't take very long when you do it. But your mind's a tricky little monkey because your mind can regrow, restructure very quickly if you're focusing the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And you can really feel that now when you're when you're working a lot, you can really feel um, when it's starting to reform again because you feel it starts to become very much, um, you know, sort of cordoned in or sort of you've got this structure like a little metal sort of um, structure coming in. And so if you can start to work from a place of love where you are here in service now not in service that you have to do it okay but in service because you're working from your heart now to really work in service from your heart without it being from need okay you really have to start to work on healing yourself okay the first part is healing yourself the next part is sending love now you can sell, send love when you're healing yourself but the intention is key i do a, a lovely meditation for an hour or two hours to realign myself where i start to lose my way and my focus where i'll sit and i'll send unconditional love now listen to me unconditional love no conditions attached because you start sending love to the world and you're thinking big car great if i do this i'm going to do really well financially <laughs> you will make so no no you make so many attachments to the world right and you can bring energy to yourself that you don't need but i'll tell you this try this for a week everyone here every day okay obviously protect yourself first call in archangel michael but send love see the world in front of you as a don't do the universe it's a bit of a big job that okay? <laughs> send love to the world okay um and, and ask, ask God to allow you to be um, a vessel and a channel for that light, okay, that love. You know, because God and your guides will only give you what you can handle. They won't all of a sudden bring through the most monumental amount of energy because it will just it'll put you off, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. And as you, as you do this, within a week, you will start to view the world differently because you reorientate and you will feel vulnerable. You will feel vulnerable you will feel more exposed but the true way forward the true way of mastery the true way to know your, your higher self the true way to embody god's light is through the stages of vulnerability and letting go because in the states of vulnerability you are the most open to receive one okay two you are in the 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 most open place to have the most profound connection with anybody else because to love another to truly connect with another you can never do that unless you're in a space of openness of your heart and vulnerability it is virtually impossible my my guides theos they said you can never you can never see the face of god until you serve another person and through that that service you know you know god yeah you know i had a little baby you know this a little baby. yes your baby yeah and for those who have put children on here it is the most wonderful experience I've ever had. And for me, it gave me an insight into how God feels for us because the love I have for my little angel is so profound. And it, it just it moved me because I thought, it moves me now. <laughs> this is how God loves us. It truly is. This is the love we have from God. And once we open up to this and we, we sort of really start to do this work, through in giving we receive as long as in 
as long as we're not giving for a car <laughs> or we're not giving for more money i've lost you karen i said it's conditional that's where the pain pain comes in for people like i did all this where's my car and if you ever listen to esther hicks you know she always say you know i'm doing this life now where's my stuff you know obviously that, that's not the point i i thought i love esther hicks stuff okay but i feel it's not in alignment with the new energy because it is I, I agree with you that's why i was making the point but she was i think she was very much a I haven't listened to her lately, so I don't know. I can't say, but I will say that she was very much a way shower of people bringing them into this idea of you are more than this body, that there's something else going on and, and that you are, that you are what you think about and you are what you believe. Um, and, but a lot of it sort of got focused on bringing, you know, bringing in the stuff. But I think that was more the people listening to her doing that than her. Oh, she was. I think a lot of the stuff got lost in translation from what she was saying. Yeah. 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 No. No. Definitely. Definitely. So, where should we go next? And what should we have a little chat about next? Well, you said there were some things that you had wanted to talk about that were I on think, your big list. Of course, there's not a big list, to be honest. Okay, on your list. Yeah. <laughs> So why don't we talk about some of that? Because we have about 15 minutes. And just, does anyone in the, you've had some nice comments from people. They enjoyed the meditation. They're having these aha moments, which has been great. Oh. There's been a lot of nice uh, stuff to uh, unpack and to, to, uh, to, you know, nice little beautiful uh, realizations I think people have had. So I think that's really good. But was there any questions from anybody in the chat? Did anyone have a question? If you do, uh, just say me and uh, we'll call on you. Um, I'm looking also, every time I turn my head, it's me looking at the YouTube uh, stream. <laughs> so, because uh, I have two computer screens right next to each other. But if we're not, we'll just go on to, so what are this, uh, some of the stuff that was on your, um, what's on your list? Short the list. Main, the, it is quite short, to be honest. The main <laughs> one is, <clears throat> if we, I was going to mention it earlier, but I sort of, because um, I'm trying to do so many things, it's quite, I lose my track. But <laughs> the 144, you know, We've all heard, or for those that don't know, there was a, a um, prophecy that when 144,000 people on the planet reached a certain level of ascension, there would be a mass, um, they call it a critical mass event of energy which shifts. Now, you know, I heard you talk about Matt Khan earlier, which is an amazing guy. A lot of people have predicted different years, so it's, I don't even like predicting, but they're talking to me about, this year is where the mass, the, the, the critical mass will happen because whereas before it was meant to happen in 2012, mm. but the problem with 2012 was we weren't evolved enough. And, and, the, and you know, as there's light, so there's dark. I'm not going to go into all the dark stuff, okay? Right. The dark was ready for us. And so the dark knew it was coming, you yeah. know, because it was so publicized. Yeah. Yeah, the 100 monkey effect, yeah. Um, and so basically, so it was ready for us. Now, in six years, I don't know about you, Karen, I have evolved massively. I mean, since 2012 to now, my level of awareness, my ascension, my everything is is light years different. It's, you know, phenomenally different. Yeah, and it does seem like it's 2012 was just yesterday, doesn't it? it no, it's gone so fast. It go, it went really fast. I remember the. I don't want to get off track, but I just remember the sort of lead up to the 2012, you know, New Year's, and there was this sort of excitement of what's going to happen, what's going to happen, or the 12, 12, 12, or whatever it was, and then it kind of came and went. And as much as we there was. You know, it didn't seem like anything's happened. If we look between then and now, so much has happened, so much has unfolded. I think we had an anticipation of what we expected things to be. And I think slowly we've also had to let go of that expectation. Mm -hmm. You know, there was people that were just like, you know, when the ship comes and I've said goodbye to my family and just silly stuff like that. But Did you know what? But those expectations, now I think, my first information, one of the first things I ever channeled was that we would all go together. There's nothing, we're not leaving anybody behind. So I never had this idea of that, oh, you know, I'm going to lose some people in, on the way. I don't think that humanity is about that. But 
anyway, go back to your what you were saying. <laughs> well, if I think back to 2012, I had a pretty wild idea that it was going to be easy. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I, didn't, I had this idea. I don't know where it came from, but I think it was my group. <laughs> Well, it but sounded it, like we were moving into nirvana. Of course, it did. I thought it was you just going to, and 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 you know, in theory, it could have if we didn't have the opposite end of the spectrum. Right? No, because we're still in duality. So you, what you yeah, yeah. so I had the worst freaking time from 2013 till you know, just not so long ago. I, I, as much as I had cr great moments, I had probably some of the worst moments as well in that period of time. So yeah. So you had your time. What was going on with you then? Well, at that time, I was going through, I was going through some some difficult stuff. But I did sort of, you know, I know now looking back that I was sort of um more, you know, hoping it would be that, hoping it would be easy rather than the reality of what it would be like. But for me back then, I thought it was going to be this tremendous quick shift, and it would all be like woo. But you know. It couldn't have been because, like you said, the world was too the world was too too much in duality, and and even now, you know, they're talking this year is where a quickening starts that's going to be phenomenal, and it means, you know, it means that you're going to get you know more things on the planet happen, you know, to balance out the population. So it's more of the light workers left, you know. I don't want to go into that; it doesn't sound very nice, but it's already happened anyway. We know with things that happen. And what they were talking to you about earlier on, they're saying <clears throat> they'd love people to be aware that what is coming now, this critical shift, and the way it's going to happen is going to be phenomenally fast and phenomenally powerful. And I don't know about you, Karen, but this year, the energy I can hold and it's coming in is just is so, so strong. And if you can't keep a grip on the energy and keep yourself in alignment and you know, not going to panic, worry, and everything else. It's tricky, and it's going to get it's going to get even higher. <laughs> Ascension is a double-edged sword. Yeah. You can feel amazing, or you can go through some of the most wild. Um, what do you call it? Roller um, coaster. Roller coasters that you'll ever ever have because you can go three D, fifty, three D, sixty. <laughs> And so you can come up and down yeah. and you know what coming down from the fifth even the fifth into the third through anger through an argument it's a hard it's landing painful. it's painful it, it feels yeah. you feel ripped yeah i i will tell you when i came back from india um and it i had i came back with this realization of how unreal things are and, and when I was there, you know, I was on a spiritual retreat and I was meditating, you know, eight hours a day. And of course I was in this sort of wonderful wow. bubble, yeah, you know, and coming back, it has just shown me how we really are in this e experiment matrix, whatever that we are, and that we're really just sort of, we're choosing to be here. And, it's, and it, it, the more that we can take the distance from being in it to observing it so that we can hold and anchor our love place so that we can, you know, play there and observe the rest. It's so much easier because I remember walking in around thinking, this isn't real. This isn't real. And then you start to experience that diversity. You feel it starting to pull you in, to pull you in. Duality sucks you in. <laughs> it starts sucking you in. You're like, no, no. So, we, we had this conversation before, what puts you back, what takes you back constantly is going back to your meditation, is going back to your practice. Ooh, so that yeah, you're yeah. able to anchor your, your energy up into this higher beautiful realm and to stay there. Because the more you stay there, the more you stay in the beautiful flow of the beautiful manifestation. You're, you're, you're operating from your heart center, you know, the, the, the dualistic things, times tend to take care of themselves you know but if you can if you can maintain it so our job now is to learn how to get there and go there and stay there because that's where we we say we want to be you know they used to say to me when do you believe what you say you believe when does your life reflect what you say that you believe 
you know, and this is that moment of, okay, now is the time to let all that other stuff go, you know, and it doesn't have to be that painful, but it, it really does need to be a choice. And in the, in the, the, the way that we get there, the way that we continue to do it is go back to our meditation, go back to our practice, loving the world, you know, filtering that stuff out, all the stuff that you've been very, very beautifully talking about this entire time. So we've had such an amazing conversation with you. It's too short. See, two hours goes very fast. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Go quick and expensive. So I'd like to definitely, I'm sure with the unanimous jury here, uh, invite you back. You know, oh, because yeah. we, let yeah. me come back and to talk about whatever else you want to talk about. We didn't get to the Neptune thing. So <laughs> next you know. time I'll, I'll channel a bit more. Yeah. Um, and I'll get some more information. To be honest, there's so much to talk about. There's so much going on right. in different realms and realities. So I was going to mention um, sure. why it's very special at the moment is we are, each person on here will have a life in either Lemuria or Atlantis. And for each person now, we are starting to work and connect with our, our past lives in Atlantis, connect with our gift, our knowledge, our wisdom. Um, and so... You know, you're saying about the practice and stuff like that. You know, I found what really helped me was the meditation was wonderful, but you you bring angels and ascended masters into the mix. You bring in you bring in. It's almost like bringing in an army that helps the one. And so, yeah, one person said, "I'm the Mary." Is that, is that you or is that someone else? That John. Oh, Steve is saying he's the Mary. Steve, Steve. And so, yeah. And so we are, I'll do this very quickly. The fifth dimension now, okay, is more readily available and accessible um, for each of us now, more so than ever before. What this means is then we can connect with our fifth dimensional blueprints and start to embody and start to restructure our, our energies to that form. Also as well, because the veils have now gone between the fifth, the sixth and the seventh, we can also work with the seventh. Now, I wouldn't recommend trying to embody the seventh because the seventh is very, very high and very intense. But the fifth dimension is where you're going to. It's mm -hmm. what you're looking to work with now. It's what you're looking to um, align with in in all areas of your life. Because if you can work with the fifth dimension, like Karen beautifully said, in the world and of the world, and so you are physically in the world, but you are looking at it from a viewpoint of love, looking at it from a viewpoint where the drama doesn't exist. And I'll tell you this now, it's doable. I'm sure Karen teaches techniques on this. I teach a lot of stuff on this to be in the world and to go into sacred portals within the self because each person's body here is a multi-dimensional portal, a multi-dimensional gateway, which means that the old term, the universe is within. And it's funny, when I ask people in a workshop, what does that mean? They go, well, the universe is within. And I say, no, no, but what does it mean more than that? And I, I, before I really sat with it and worked my guides, all you think is the universe within. But the reality is that everything you'll ever need is inside of yourself. So mm -hmm. the fourth dimension, the fifth dimension, the seventh dimension, the twelfth dimension, it's all part of who you are. And when you realize that each of your chakras is multi layered, multi dimensional, each part of you is multi-layered, multi-dimensional, interdimensional. Then you can start to play with this. You can start to access <clears throat> states of being long before the planet is at that state of being. We wait for the body to catch up with the energy, and you don't need to. Right. It's already there. You can already access these gateways, these portals. You can go to some very special places just by intention. That's the next. That's the next webinar. Intention. Intention. Oh, but going good, but accessing your your portals of ascension. You know your portals of access. That would be a beautiful yeah. webinar. Yeah, among yeah. other things. We'll definitely have you back. Uh, we're at the top of the hour, so we really have to go. But uh, please, please, uh, if you have any upcoming online uh, webinars, let us know. What uh, workshops that people can join? Uh, again, we'll the. Um, Scott's um, uh, 
website is on the YouTube chat in the in the comments under his biography. It's interdimensionalhealing.co.uk. It's there. Um, I tried to save it as a link. You might have to cut and paste it, but it is definitely there. So um, please go and visit his website and, and go to any webinars. Do you have anything coming up? I do. I've got an online workshop, which is um, called... Um, It is called <laughs> Celestial and Starseed Lineage. And that, that workshop is basically all about connecting with your, finding out who your higher self is. Because you have a higher self, which is, say, my one is, is Lord Rakotsky. Mm -hmm. And then you've got your monad, which can be an angel, can be a seraphim. And the monad is the higher, higher aspect of yourself. Right. Then you've got your planetary connections, the Pleiades, the Neptune, Orion, Andromeda. You might not be from this galaxy. And so what it is, it's to, to understand who you are and what your, your genetic, um, divine, celestial and galactic lineage is. Then you will then understand why you're here. Oh, beautiful. When And when does so that begin? That begins on the, it's supposed to begin on, on Wednesday, but I'm going to put it um, two weeks time afterwards. So it'll be. Two weeks from Wednesday, which will be. Two weeks from Wednesday. That'll be the second, the. 30 days of it'll be the second of july second of july that's fast math i think the midis checks of i'm sure I'll start something else no it's the fourth of july fourth of july sorry fourth <laughs> of july yeah well that's a holiday in america so everyone can tune in for that oh, but go to interdimensional healing what is the do you know what the, what is the cost um it's 150 pounds for six two-hour sessions Okay. Over 12 weeks. And it's over 12 weeks. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Okay. Uh, can, I, can I quickly say the other one? The other one is, sure. um, it's basically, it's an inner child uh, mastering of the self and patterns. Somebody asked earlier here, um, do I do CDs? And, and the answer is yes. Okay. I do okay. CDs. Yes. I do ones for the, the bowls. I also, for anybody that's interested in Lemuria or Atlantis, I, I do, I've created an Atlantis, Atlantean CD course, which is five CDs. And the Lemurian, which is seven, obviously five dimensions, seven dimensions. And it takes you on a journey to reconnect your past lives. And each CD is a portal and a gateway to your your past connections. And you get a workbook to go with it. So there's my ending bit. <laughs> oh, perfect. Uh, from the from the uh, from the YouTube chat, uh, I can't say this name. I'm just going to say Alma Cheta Tai. Cybo, wow, what a name. Okay, says, I want all the other dimensions. That's not enough. Feed me more. So I think that's awesome. just, a, just a, for you to, to come okay, back. So, sure, but go ahead. So you've got the the fifth dimension, global love. The seventh dimension, the sixth dimension is goes to, to galactic, <clears throat> more of a galactic energy. So it's more working with the uh, ascended masters and that sort of stuff. The seventh dimension is the the first dimension of the pure light of the I am. And so you're working with the first realm of the angelic kingdom as well and, and some other beings like that. The eighth dimension then moves more. Um, the seventh dimension is, is non-duality. The seventh dimension is there is no form and structure. Okay, so you move into that the level there. Then you go to the eighth. The eighth then moves more to work with a higher expanding consciousness of God. You're working, you know, because it's an eight, which is infinity, you start to work with the inf infinite consciousness, the the higher state of divine manifestation, um, and moving to the next level of the angelic kingdom, that sort of stuff. And it just really goes up each more, it sort of becomes more and more, I have got notes on this, but I don't know where they are, but each one moves you, shifts you to um, being more open to the, the infinite expanded consciousness, which is God's light. So you understand more of the universe, how it works. Right. You access information instantly. You you know what the divine plan is for your pathway. You do not, you know what the divine plan is for Earth. You you start to become the higher you get, the more you start to become one 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 sort of heart with God. And so then you start to, you know, have the most amazing connection with God and you you no longer doubt, you no longer fear. So if you work with the fifth, you get a global oneness and you can connect with your higher self and hold that light. The sixth dimension moves you more towards working um, with a, a, a level of galactic love, moving out to the infinite consciousness of the, of the universe. The seventh takes you to oneness with God. Mm. 
So an infinite oneness. If you work with the seventh dimension, which I do at times, it is beautiful, but there's nothing in it. And so you, you can literally be, if I go in there for too long and I don't ground properly, I can sit there for hours just, yeah, just like doing nothing like, because the energy is just, that there is no, there's nothing in there that, that inspires you to work from a place of trying or ego. But it is where we're going eventually. We're going to work with that. And since the a few months ago, what's fascinating, the the Merkaba um, is starting to change shape. The Merkaba is two triangles, which makes sense because the bottom one is the masculine, the top one's the mm-hmm. feminine. As we evolve, as they said, it's going to move to become a diamond. And so it comes out of itself when we go into a higher dimension. Mm. And they try to explain to me more, but I've not got the full thing. And they said it looks more like a rhomboid than a diamond. Now, a rhomboid is a, an off kilter square. So it is similar. And so for each of us now, as this this shift occurs with the um, the Merkaba slightly changing its, it's not changing its shape at all, really. It's just realigning in a different way. We start to work with the divine diamond ray. Now, the divine diamond ray is the ray of light that all energy comes from. Okay, your pink ray, your blue ray, your orange ray, apart from the gold ray, because the gold ray comes from God's heart. Okay, so the pure gold ray, okay, comes from the pure sacred heart of God. Helios, it comes from Helios. Um, I'm sure we all remember um, when we were at science class, we did the prism. You put the white light in and it spreads out and it gives the rays, red, yellow, blue, and all that kind of stuff. Right. And that's how they showed me how it comes down for the divine diamond. So the divine diamond ray comes through this diamond sort of shape energy. And as it comes through, it then splits into these rays. And that's how we, you know, we interact and work with these, these various color rays. Very basic explanation, but that is basically the gist of, yeah, the divine diamond ray and why the divine diamond ray is, is in its own is so important. Mm, it's beautiful. beautiful. Thank you. Thank for you for expanding. Well, you're welcome. So, so once again, once again it's, we're, we're out of time, unfortunately. We're out of we're out of moments for this moment. Let's, I don't yeah. want I don't want to limit us with time. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's uh, when we're done, we'll we'll talk about trying to have you come back in like a, another month in August. I think that would be I'd great to, yeah. for everyone. So Steve, Steve, Scott. Scott, I know I'm looking at Steve's picture right there. Scott, thank you so very much. Interdimensionalhealing.co.uk. Much love to you, to your wife, to your daughter. Thank you. Thank you. And um, yeah, blessings. Much love to you too. Much blessings. Much love to all of you. Thank you for watching. Um, just so everyone knows, this is the Saturday Human Colony Hukalo webinar. If you want to find out anything more about our upcoming guests, next week, Jim Charles will be back after a month of being away. He'll be here on the 23rd and the 30th. So uh, we have two weeks of Jim. Uh, he'll be channeling. And then after that, we will have some new guests. And we'll talk about that then. On the 16th through the 21st of August, we have the Human Colony uh, workshop in New York. It's $400 for five days and that will include channeling workshops and galactic reiki as well as some other wonderful healing experiences and wonderful fellowship with our with our good friends and also if you would like to become a member of human colony you can join for ten dollars a month it gives you always a front seat row to our saturday webinar and also some discounts coming up on our uh, ongoing classes and things that we have so please check that out on hukalo.org So namaste, everyone. Much love to you. Send love to the world every day, just like we learned. I'd be interested. I'm going to check back with everybody next week and make sure that we all did it. So much love and namaste. Namaste.